I'm going to talk about the logical intuitive introvert <laughs> and about how they use uh, ethics of relations and comfort sensor. I'm going to put this on screen. And then later on, I will have a look at how I think I act a little bit like Kersey ISFP. But we're going to stay within the context of socionics at first. So the idea here with the social adaptation block, so this would be in the, the top right corner of the graphic for LII. And I should have put that graphic on screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly uh, write it out. And Santa is here to keep me on target. So I'm even going to use the one letter code. What we got here? E, F, and what's this one in the corner? P. So that there. So we're looking at this corner here of LII. R and S. F, I, and S, I. So the idea here, and this is a, and Model G is arranged in a uh, social benefit ring. And the, I like this idea in Model G of when your first two functions do not suit the task at hand and the task at hand that Victor models for the analyst, for, for, for LII is the analyst. And so he, he has the two strongest functions in uh, humanitarian socionics for the LII. And this is the same in Model A as well. There's a little bit of a noise in the, in the background. Is that, is that you, Sana? Is it? Yeah. If, if you what kind of your, noise? No, it was just, if you mute your mic and then unmute it when you want to say something, that might work. Is it gone when I do that? Might be. No. Okay. Um, anyhow, keeping on track. So the idea is that um, one of the presuppositions of Model A is that an introvert pretty much stays within all their introverted functions. And when the first two introverted functions, so TI and NI, don't work for uh, LII, they then switch to FI and SI. Um, and so, when you, and also you've got this thing where LII is stimulated by comfort sensor. So um, let's have a look at what that means. What do we mean by FI and SI in, in humanitarian socionics? So, we have here a comfort sensor, a function which is responsible for practical care of bodily needs such as rest, nourishment, nourishment, clothing, shelter, etc. Although Sana had something to say earlier on that you know, clothing is not is not only taggable with comfort sensor. There are other reasons for it. Yeah, but I was talking about Model A. I mean, if this is how it is in Model G, I would know. Uh, actually, he, he might put, Victor might put sort of like sexual attraction under SI, if you read between the lines uh, of his definition in his book, 64. Uh, then we've got relationship ethics is a function that shapes modest and empathetic behavior. Oh, right. One of the things you'll notice here is the way he's defined these functions He's done them in terms of how they appear as, as behavioral units. So you see how they manifest. So for instance here, for power sensing, a function that is responsible for stimulation, aggression, buildup, and release. Interesting that stimulation is in there. Uh, right. So how Victor defines FI right and then i'll i'll probably go straight to that box and then i'll go back to si um forgiving people giving them the benefit of the doubt grieving and comforting those struck by grief being kind to others that's the ethic of eii 
uh, then for ESI, keeping others at a distance, being suspicious, holding a grudge, such is the ethics of ESI. Uh, now, I would say that these are sort of the extreme poles of the uh, function that can people can switch uh, between the two. So, an example would be ESFJ is not always giving out the really positive emotions and, and, and ENFJ is not really being like super dramatic cult leader kind of sort of like there's a, there's a blend between the two but these come from these charges comes come from the reigning dichotomy of uh, in this case positivist and negativist um so i reckon i should go to fi and then come back to uh si so this was done in a previous event where i was showing so that is the top row of lii and at the bottom that is the top row of esi and i wanted to show the uh how this repeats on various scales by having these uh, letters which are complementary so in here keeps its distance from people may seem stern aloof and uncaring so that's within lii and that is a smaller scale version of this over here the lead the lead uh, function in esi controls the distance in communication and stays at safe distance from bad people uh what we got uh b may strongly disapprove of the moles around it but will usually keep its opinion to itself and then b over here gives firm evaluation of the morality of actions by those people deals with um so it's almost as if there's a smaller scale esi within lii and the same goes for here, a smaller scale LII within ESI, where you've got here. Uh, a good teacher of structured disciplines, e.g. mathematics in elementary and secondary school. It's a pretty strong role function where you can be like a math teacher with a role function. That's a pretty strong role function. Um, or maybe Victor doesn't think, think much of mathematics at that level. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, but we're looking at FI, so we're not comparing the other ones. Uh, oh, we've done the A's and the B's. So, there's a the idea in uh, humanitarian socio socionics for LII is that there is an ESI within us. Uh, so, in my case, I have a one in the tri type uh, and I, I uh, think I, and I go with six four one and I think uh, and we've got Wojtek here he goes with five two eight five wing six and uh, this might be interesting because you keep your distance from people, don't you, Vitek? But, but but you also got that too in your tri type. Um, yeah, but I mean, um, I'm a core five, so I'm the stereotype of an introverted thinker in EN, that uh, basically ENT. So this correlates well, but yeah, I've got the two in my tri type, and this is like the polar opposite of it. Two is very, I, I think two is uh, uh, at least in young in functions, it would be rather fe ish. Yeah, in um, in MB, uh, in socionics, it might be fi. So, um but anyways, Ben, we were talking about your FI usage. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, there's actually a quote from Sana here about this. 
Here we go. This is about this is uh, this is about when I was being uh, typed in uh, objective personality. Right, and then there was. Uh, a, wow, there was I can't a, remember what I said. <laughs> I think that was from last year. You tell me. Is uh, there still a, a sound, by the way? Yeah, there's, 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 yeah but it was sort of. It's, I think it's pretty much there all the while now. It's it's okay. Um, well, I don't really want to go into that, but this is the thing. It's like in talking about this, I was like, I would move into the social adaptation. Block, well, but this which, is op this is very different yeah yeah but, but but the point was what you said about me that was that like how i experience oh. fi is it's it's not my happy place when i'm in from a socionic from this socionics point of view from this particular kind of it's not when i'm in uh my happy place because my happy place is more being in say Effie in any where I'm comfortable and being expressive when I'm going to FI like this, this is like when I'm annoyed. And yeah. it's like the, the Enneagram type one. And so also you can it's see, very non communicative, like you don't you don't talk about it ever. Yeah. It yeah. Also I'm very entertained that you're actually screenshotting my comments a year ago. Well, it was it was relevant for the it was relevant it for was, but I'm still entertained. Right. Yeah. I forgot I said all that stuff. <laughs> I like how you you spelt quite well with the, with that spelling to emphasize huh? the, the way you spelt quiet. Q U oh. oh, yeah. to emphasize well, yeah. it. Ben is taking notes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm um I'm looking at these pictures through the stream, so I can't actually see what you have on the. Oh, I'll read it out then. Uh, yeah. But I know Ben quite well, and based on my limited understanding of the system, OP, I don't see him as S I T E of any kind. I think you're right about F I over F E though, probably masculine because it's got very sharply defined personal values, which you will quickly find under the agreeable surface if and when you accidentally hit them. I don't see him getting his values primarily from the tribe. And then what I mean is he definitely plays with NT topics and approaches and communicates them in a very interactive play style. Then there is a super privacy NF value call right underneath it that shows up rarely but strongly. He definitely thinks for himself his reasons are not absorbed from others. He pieces stuff together on his own. I would. Uh, so, uh, getting back to me, um, tri uh, Enneagram might play into this. So with the one in the tri-type, uh, people know what the one is like. I actually regard the 641 sextet so all six combinations with those numbers, I regard that as triple FI. And actually, if you and if you switched it, and if you switched it to, um, if you if you put in say, uh, I, I would regard two six nine as triple FE. Uh, the reason why I say triple FI for one four six is you've got uh, these the sort of like the right the right uh, the righteous stuff associated with one. You've got uh, the so identity. Ben, so do you see do you see six as FI or FE? Well, like I said, it 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 it's it does both. So it's like. Two, two, six, nine is triple FE. One, four, six is triple FI. Because it's like, it's so much feeling, but it's the most feeling one out of the head center. Agreed? Because you've got the ambivalence in there. I don't know. Um, I would rather see the seven as more feely, probably. 
difficult to say. But uh, given the given the self doubt that you get and the ambivalence within the six, there's a lot of analysis of feelings going on within the six, and there's a lot of CBT stuff going on. Where what I mean by that is their model of thinking affecting feeling and feeling affecting thinking. Just look at when someone worries; their thinking processes affect their feelings. So. Where in the defense mechanism of the seven, it's the sort of like reframe things and to sort of like look on the bright side of things. So you're sort of like looking away from the emotions and the feelings uh, in the seven. And then the five tries to analyze their feelings and repress their feelings. If they're a five wing four, they try to analyze uh, their feelings. Uh, but they're trying to keep a distance between the feelings and themselves, whereas the four uh, embraces their feelings. Now, there is a, a bit of theory out there that I think it's the self press four tries to repress uh, their feelings, their emotions. Uh, but I would stick to the fact that I think that six is the most feely of the head center because you can get because a six four one a six four something tri type can think there are four of course six with a secondary four can think there are four um yeah i mean uh, um what, what is the definition of FA minus uh, in um, uh, in model G? Because I think yeah, it's probably would be correlated conceptually to a six. The six uh, dynamics would be probably correlated to FI minus somewhat. Did you, did you to make make these correlations? But, did you uh, say did you say you wanted FE? Uh, yeah, FE minus. Uh, okay, FE FE oh. minus is like demonstrative demonstrative. I've not got it in the in the slides but it's demonstrative behavior it's um it's like the the, the socialist stereotype of eie is as a drama queen sort of like demonstrative dramatic behavior that's how they see okay, uh more jewish, yeah fe minus more what did you say more jewish to <laughs> <laughs> uh, jewish models uh <laughs> no uh two ish ah uh, two ish Ah, I see, right. Anyhow, we're getting a little bit off track here. But so, but yeah, so those aspects to, related to the uh, the four themes and, and throw sexual subtype in there as well, or intimate subtype. And uh, so oh, it's all weird with uh, the FI, is I'd, I'd actually rather not exist in that state. Only when, and I'll get onto this later on when we get onto Kersey and the composer, when it becomes useful when writing. But in general, I'd rather not be in that state. And I think that's consistent with the fact that the, the rational, the NT, values being calm and being in a state of, or being in a, in a more happy place. Like I said, it's like when I'm in mini ENFP mode, rather than mini ESI mode. I mean, all you have to really say is that you value FE over FI. And if it's a model G, it's FI plus, yeah? So it's very different. It, it's, it's, not quite, it's not quite as simple as that, though. <laughs> because there's certain situations where I value FI over FE, it's just a case of when i'm in that in that state the experience of fe is more pleasurable than when i'm in the state of fi but when i'm in a state of fi that's when i'm annoyed on being righteous about something and when i'm in that state i don't value well FE. yeah it's it's ultimately it's a it's an order of uh, priorities yeah like yeah. but but i mean if you the way we would, we would explain it in Model A is that 
uh, when it comes to the valued, not subdued elements, you enjoy them for their own sake, whereas role is yeah. something that you see the point of and you will engage it when it's needed, but it's not something that you want to engage for its own sake. Yeah. It's, it's like a purpose-driven uh, act. Yeah, and you can see from these lines that the person in these states is not in a happy place, that they're a little bit upset. I mean, imagine what this person is feeling when they're in these states. Keeps its distance from people, may seem stern and aloof and kind. It's, it's like a state that don't enjoy being in. Um, and so, like, if you're if you are strongly disapproving of the moles around you, it's not something that I enjoy doing. That it's, but I experience it. So, like I said, it's like. Wanting to be in any FE rather than in this, it's a little bit different with you, Voitek, where you where you are in FE, I think you said, mm. and you want to and you want to wish you could get rid of that bit. Um. Yeah. Well. Um. That's a whole other story. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. It's... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I shouldn't have brought that up. That was a private conversation, naughty man. Uh, but you can see here that it's that that this this if you, this description here, it's a person in a state where, like I said, this is what they've switched to. This is not what they're happiest, and like that's consistent with model A about their definition of the role function. This is this is the alternative that they want to be in the captain function or the the program function which would be ti where they're happier uh now but what i would say is uh, with certain activities i absolutely do go to fi say when writing and putting myself in the center of a character then that becomes very useful and i'll talk about that later on um let's see if there's anything else under fi um, but in the context of writing, would this still be Fi minus? Well, usually when you're putting yourself in the center of a character and you're writing drama, someone's upset. So, and plus someone being happy is like, it's not as useful. But But in the case of going towards drama yeah i think usually it is because because like i said you know in drama usually people are upset and like you've been watching the expanse <laughs> most of those people's emotional states is being upset um, is that related to fi that sounds more like drawing from fe when you're writing that which but yeah, no, I'm talking about the internal. Yeah, uh, uh, expressing the emotional. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah of the, your character. Yeah, the ex when. You... Wait a minute, say that again. Uh, expressing the emotional qualities of your character sounds more FE related than FI. Yeah, but I'm sort of like, this. Get this is why I wanted to talk about it later on because of the way I define FI is slightly differently. Uh, and I'll go into okay. that, and I'll go into that later on because it depends on the definition. But we're using this definition. You really shouldn't we're digress talking about like Model this. G definitions. Yeah, yeah, we are talking about Model G definition at the moment, right then. So, um, and I'll get onto that later. Uh, thing is, though, the Model G definition is not quite that simple because in his book sixty four. Victor does sort of go on to different aspects of FI. So, for example, he does bring in ethics. And he actually put ethics in here when he says disapprove of the morals around it. So it's not just ethics of relations. I mean, that one, I mean, I mean, all of, all of those are ethics of relations except for. And that is part of the plane of the function. There is a um, an ethical plane to uh, that function. 
So here we go. I'll, I'll give people a little bit of a quote of this. Where is this? Oh, here we go. Psychological plane. I'll give the audience a little bit of this. Psychologically, the state of R is experienced as an inner attraction to someone or something as deep affection. It is interesting that this condition is not emotional. There is no expression in it, but there is a long-term dependence on the moral and ethical nature. The state of R is a guarantee of loyalty in a relationship. It is like the arrow of a compass, which, in any attempt to turn its body, returns to its native northern direction. Thanks to R, we perceive people, places, and time as our own, native or strangers, alien. Uh, ethical. A strong dependence on the moral ethical nature. I'm getting a little bit off track. Um, so, I think I should go on a S. Go on, yes, boy. Okay, okay. Uh, can you explain your definition of a FI then? Let's just start with that. Okay, you want you want me to go? Well, okay, okay. Let's go. You're in my opening definition. a Pandora's box if you want to do that. <laughs> I know. Right, it's not right. going to stay within the hour. Just saying. <laughs> right. Okay. So I did this a few years ago, and I still stick to a lot of this, like in terms of, I see pros and cons to uh fi but i also see that with ti as you do um and good and know, bad use every function has its pluses and minuses um, yeah but um like um just just generally uh your personal definition of fi which uh which definition is closest to like from which uh system well, well, what I do is, uh, well, you see, I see different shades to FI. And so um, there is the, uh, the assertive aspect of FI, which is like, where it's like that real feeling of somebody where you've got these subjective idiosyncratic ethics and you, you're being... Values. Yeah, you're, you're, where you're prepared to say true to your values even if it means going against the social grain that's one aspect of it the other aspect of fi and this is the one that i find most useful to me you see i'd rather not be in that state because it's easier not to be in that state it's easier not to be upset All right so i mainly i mainly experience that in a negative way um so but it, it's tricky. So, um, the imaginative use of FI. This is huge. This is huge in art. So, Douglas oh. Adams was bad at writing characters. He was bad at characterization because he couldn't, he couldn't put himself with FI, with the way I define it, this particular kind of imaginative FI, you're able to put yourself at the center of a character and act not as you would act in that position, but act um, as that character would act and think and feel in that position. Sorry, Ben, let's explain. We think he was, uh, Douglas Adams was ENTP, FIP. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And there, were, and there were plenty of examples of the FI polar with him. And they even asked him about it. They asked him about Arthur Dent. It says, Doug Nelvin Bragg said um, in 1992, he said, isn't he a bit of a stereotype? And I said, oh, absolutely. I'm interested in ideas, not characters. <laughs> Larry Neven would be another ENTP author with, with bad characterization, but great ideas. Larry Neven? A uh, ring world. Oh, right, sci fi writer. Okay. Yeah. The, part of my brain heard Larry N heard a, a, an actor called Niven. I don't know what's mm. going on. So, do you agree? Do you think those things relate to FI? The kind of like the, the subjective idiosyncratic ethics and being prepared. I mean, we see it. Yeah, this, this is the core definition of FI for me, but I think it right. comes more from uh, MBTI or Jung. Right. Like, right. This is how I understand it. Yeah. But I would say that all functions have their values related to them. So, for example, extroverted sensing values stimulation extroverted intuition values the world as possibilities um and novelty so there's a there's a value associated with each 
of the functions. Um, and then I would also say that FI is heavily related to empathy because the FI polar types are not very good at empathy, but a very particular kind of empathy. And, and Wojtek and I have different uh, definitions of empathy. Yes, you uh, do need to define empathy because there yeah. are several types, not yeah. just like a type from a typology point of view, but in like, um, you know, psycho psychological yeah. definitions. Yeah. So what I mean by empathy is, well, there's a couple of things. There's one is, and it goes to different areas in the brain. There's one is feeling what the other person feels but I would say that's more of an FE kind of empathy. I, I think that's basically, um, what's it called? Uh, and that might bleed over into sympathy. Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, I would say that's the at least uh, applicable. It's probably both socionics and MBTI definitions yeah. of FE. Basically just feeling directly what somebody else is feeling. It's, so, uh, yeah, it's emotional contagion is the uh, like the psychological term for that. Right, okay. And that's related to region F5 behind the left ear in right-handers. Um, but the kind of empathy it's, I'm sort of relating to here is an empathy that is based around, a, that is related to connection, that is related to identification, that is related to uh, uh, a vicarious ability where someone is able to Put themselves into somebody else's shoes and empathy is very much related to in this particular definition i use um it's related to identification with the person now one of the reasons why i use this definition is i was heavily influenced by robert mckee's book story and i read it twice uh covers a cover where he talks about the difference with say a character like macbeth and he writes that Macbeth is not a sympathetic character, but he is an empathetic character because the audience can empathize with his guilt. So it's finding that connection, that shared humanity. That's the empathy part. And it goes back to Aristotle in... So the thing is, Aristotle's poetics, they reckon that they were not what he actually wrote. They, they were sort of like the lecture notes because what contemporaries of Aristotle actually said was that his writing style was a river of gold. But what it looks like we've not, we've, so Aristotle's actual smooth writings never survived. All we have are his lecture notes and his lecture notes are very terse and we don't know if students did them. And so when people look at Aristotle's work and say the poetics, it's very compressed and what I suggest to people, if you want to read Aristotle's poetics, read Robert McKee first. Robert McKee is a neo-Aristotelianism. Sorry, a neo-Aristotelian. Back, back to your definition. Uh, yes. The last point suppresses logic. Um, so... Um, um, I, 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 I disown that bit now. I disown oh. that statement now because I disown that statement because I, because I separate logic from ti ti is just a particular kind of logic i disown that statement i should edit that graphic anyway yeah, i got if, no if you're talking about socionics fi though i uh, don't um, think it necessarily equals the person knowing why they feel that way okay so i have the next aspect of fi which this is where socionics fi comes in for me so you got the you, ethics of relations your psychological distance and connection and then and then also values into harmony with each other uh, and i noticed this with uh, leon uh, type tips when we were try when we were when we were try fixing him diagnosing his try fix and uh and he uh, resembles eii but as a type nine He's trying to integrate all of these values and put them in balance and harmonize his values with other people's values so it's very interesting because before then i thought enneagram 9 eii was impossible so uh, i learned from that uh, experience 
uh, getting back to Wojtek's comment on versus logic. Uh, and this was written six years ago. Um, uh, I was being a little bit cheeky at the time. Uh, it well, can suppress hard-headed reasoning, I would say. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the definition. I mean, TI and FI can't uh, exist in the same space. Yeah. And uh, as I, uh, I how, like... How, how did you thinking evolved on this after you separated TI from logic? Well, it, that's the thing is I separated it out because I realized that I want to separate... Also, I read more of Jung. And I sort of came to the idea that I want to separate reasoning power from TI in TE because that helps to explain why you can get, say, ethical types more intelligence than NTs and with better reasoning power, even though they it's and it's and so I don't I don't wanna get trapped into thinking that there's only two kinds of thinking, that there's only TE and TI. And so I, I very want to specifically, so I just read more Jung, thought about it, elaborated upon, upon things. And so reasoning power, I made it, it's, it's where the, we're getting away from sociology here, but I do with the, with the, the subjective factor, it's with say the very intelligent FI Dom, they can have brilliantly strong reasoning power, stronger than an INTP, but it's their whole th feeling, the whole thinking is going to be colored by their premises and the premises, the way they're chosen is going to be colored by the feeling factor and the subjectivity uh, around that. And so, and also in the opposition between thinking and feeling, the actual opposition is not actually between those two because as a six, someone who's like a six, thinking and feeling frequently go together. The actual difference between those two is that thinking aims at impersonal objectivity, whereas feeling aims at a subjectivity. So it's the, it's the impersonal objectivity at which thinking aims, which is the opposite of feeling. But there can be many thinking states, such as when you're thinking about your emotions or thinking about your feelings, where there's not that direct opposition there. And this, and also I learned more about CBT, and I was thinking, well, CBT has had about 50,000 studies. Who am I to contradict all of that research on the relationship between thinking and feeling? So I was sort of nuancing the way I uh, define things. So yeah, I put I put conscience massively under uh, FI. Uh, now this is going to be also be something that differs by temperament, but we get into that later because like Jeff has talked about this, like the way he experiences uh, conscience is different as an artisan. Uh, I mean, it depends on where your conscience comes from. It doesn't have to be in a feeling based decision it can be something it can be ai based it can be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, I'm, 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 I'm i mean it's dangerous when you take a widely human attribute like conscience and you try to apply it to a single element yeah well when i did this sheet in 2014 and i wrote it on a piece of a4 paper in big text if i was doing this now i would nuance it a bit more and split it up but is that particular kind of feeling um, I would put under uh, FI? I mean, as, as, long, as long as you don't make the claim that you need FI to have a conscience. Obviously, every type has FI, but many of okay. them don't rely on FI. Okay. okay, what is the conscience like of FI polar people? Oh... This is where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, for a start, they can have a very 
distinct uh, TI FE based uh, system or a system of ethics. Yeah, but to me, that's not conscience. It, it is when you when you're in the moment and you see that you've hurt somebody else and you FE it out and you realize that you don't want that reaction. Yeah, but you see, that's mechanical. That's going by. Well, so is conscience. Me, conscience is just me, a feeling. It's yeah, just, but that's. Oh. that's that's the thing. I'm going off the feeling, the conscience. Of, yeah, you, but they're both that, feelings. Yeah, but that's like a sociopathic way of looking at it. In terms it's not a, of, it's not because you're actually feeling the feelings that they are um, radiating. That's what FE does. You oh, I I feel bad because I made that person feel bad. I don't want this. I don't want that person to feel bad. That's FE. Okay, that's FE conscience, right? Okay, that's slightly different though. But in general, though, I don't see a lot of conscience going on with uh, FI polar people, right? But again, that's I a do. different discussion. That's a different discussion. No, I'm just, yeah, well, you wanted somebody to argue you. I'll yeah, argue yeah, yeah. with you, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, can have this, we can have this I, argument I, I, in I'm future. interested in Sanos arguments. <laughs> but that is. That, but anyway, I would. That, I would argue that the statement that fi polar people are lacking in conscious is wrong and dangerous and not accurate when it comes to actual people well I would you're say describing like, not a type but a psychopath and that uh, fi polar doesn't make one a psychopath um Sana, can you describe a situation uh illustrate a situation when fi polar people displays um a conscience um, aside from the one I just explained in relation to FE, yeah, with um, with usage of FE, like, um, can you expand on it? Well, every person, for example, when I'm when I'm when I was describing that, I was thinking of my ILE father, who is by far not lacking in conscience. He just doesn't have the like. He, his conscience and his sense of uh, like especially social ethics is very much reliant on the moment to moment input that he's getting it's not like a blanket statement of this thing is always wrong it's more like okay this thing is making a person uncomfortable and I don't want that so I modify my behavior or I ask for help Because if he is a very in the moment element in socionics, probably MBTI as well, but in socionics specifically, it's it needs constant real time input to operate. Yeah. Yeah, in the room, yeah. yeah, that's very much like region T5. But I think that's a different process. You might end up with it's the same. It's a different, a different process from conscience. That's yeah, but both. I don't. Th I don't think it's. I think they're both conscience. One of them is just based on FI, one of them is based on FE, and the FE type of conscience can be based on a TI framework of values yeah. underneath. Right, right. So it's actually good that you're saying this because this goes back to something I was saying a couple of years ago, that there's different ways of skinning a cat. And so I would say that, that relationships can be uh, managed via FE and FI rather than just fi well i just object to your um claim that conscious conscience which is a person's moral sense of right and wrong according to google yeah is somehow fi specific which i would say it is not yeah but i think that you do you you well we just have a different uh, agree a different well, I, go by the, on that. <laughs> I go by the dictionary definition here, which is yeah, a person's moral sense of right and wrong. Yeah, but in, in terms of an actual internal feeling, that's how I I would know. How, how is it, it different? How is it different? How is what different? How how is the internal state different? Like why why is it, what is it about FI that you would apply to only FI when it comes to the internal sense or feeling? Well in this case but that's based on
in that case, they need the person there to see the reaction on their face. But that has nothing to do with whether they consider it right or wrong. It's just that a has, method that is, of the, yeah. ac accept, yeah. accepting input. Yeah, but it's like there's different ways, like two different ways of skinning the cat. Where, like, yeah, so but the, the, why, the, is it, the, why is it only one of them conscious by your definition? Because it, 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 it's related to a personal feeling of right and wrong. But they're both related to the personal feeling of right or wrong. One of them may have been arrived at with TI instead of FI, but it's still a valid moral system. Yeah, but you go in, you, when you gave the example, say, of somebody, but somebody's reading the emotion uh, on somebody's face. Yes. That's, that's via FE. Yes. I agree with you there. That's mm -hmm. attending to social feedback. Mm -hmm. with, without that input there, the person wouldn't have that feeling right because the but but what it, what happens is that feeling is compared to the internal system which is the i and the fe is kind of like a method of gauging whether that system is being breached you don't need fi to do that obviously everyone has it but you don't need it like i said if i was doing this now i would nuance it <laughs> okay. like, because like I said with relations uh, where um, I said there's two different ways of managing like I think people can manage relations by Effie they can pick up on the effect that they're having on uh, other people they can use the social norms and they can use Effie to uh, manage relationships well I just object to your uh, to your suggestion that conscious is FI. I do not think so. Well, I, I usually see that FI polar people are the uh, the worst when it comes to a internal sense of right and wrong, absent any other kind of inputs. I'm not even sure that's true. At least not in my experience. I that said, I don't know a lot of them. But the ones I do know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really say that. Well, we, we can get a, over. We we can go into this a bit more with Jonathan on um, Saturday. What do you think about Edward Snowden's conscience decision to reveal stuff? I think Edward Snowden is an INTP. Yeah, and his conscience is very TI dominated. All, all he does is explaining in logical ways why what he experienced was wrong. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that it went much through FE. Maybe, well, well he, explains, he explains his objections through it's not the proper way to treat people, basically. So right. um, how, 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 how does this fit into your... Um, well, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't put everything to do with, like, ethical judgments under FI. I don't, just, like, so, put it in one no, no, little no, box. One definition of consciousness, uh, uh, conscience, like, would you, uh, do you only uh, focus on the feeling of conscience or the concept of a conscience? Oh, in this particular instance, it's the feeling. Mm. But, yeah, I mean... I mean, I've experienced that as well. Yes, I mean, in, in terms, because you've got, there, you've got a whole blend of, it's like I said with the CBT thing, you've got a whole blend of thinking and feeling going on. It's not that that simple. Uh, but I would say that if you were to look at, if you were to check it by the polars, and if you were to look at, say, FI DOMs and then FI allergic people, you would say that the FI DOMs are more guided by an internal sense of right and wrong. Ethics. Yeah, an internal feeling, an internal mm. feeling of right and wrong. Now, Yeah, but that's you, just a way to access it, as you said. It's not the... Yeah, right, because there's, there's other methods of skinning a cat so um like so when i think with a lot of libertarian stuff that there's a lot of logical and reasoning stuff that goes through there 
and it all gets blended together and in, and in reality it's, it, we can't really separate it into these boxes but when we look at people from a whole type pattern then you know conscience sensitivity empathy appropriateness these things are not exactly the strong suit of fi polar people unless they're in the moment and they you know um, get the feedback now as we know though but looking at the brain it's a lot more complicated than just saying fe and fi so for example that no um, it, because it's a lot of ti as well you can have a you can have just as good a, a, a system of personal ethics that's ti based compared to fi uh, and and you're most likely going to be able to explain it better too because you will know why you you yeah uh, yeah so this applies to ti creators as well well yeah it doesn't, it doesn't mean well, yeah. that they're not going to have a system of a system of ethics and it can be just as strict <laughs> as it is for an ESI or something. It's probably yeah. not gonna. It's probably not gonna be the same as in. They're gonna. It's gonna be like more. I mean, I think it's. Um, and, yeah, it's okay if you say that FI has a focus on the experience of conscious. Yes. Yes. Without without uh, making uh, it yeah. exclusive. Yeah, also I didn't add on, I, I didn't add on here that this is experienced differently in NFs, in NF, in Delta NS than Gamma SFs. Anyway, this is going to be a hell of a long conversation to talk about conscience and stuff. Anyway, so I did FI, uh, now um, SI. Is even more of a hornet's nest SI a function which is responsible for practical care of bodily needs such as rest, nourishment, clothing, shelter um, we did that one right then uh, sensation of comfort uh, so S plus this is, this is modelled as being in LII adjusting to the environment to make yourself as comfortable as you can make yourself autonomous da, 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 da. Right, and then we've got for SI minus treatments of malady or resolution of everyday discomforts, right, which is good at avoiding extremes. Then we've got all this. I don't know how visible that is. So, the function of the psyche, which is responsible for the substantive concern for the needs of the body, eating, sleeping, clothing, health, living conditions, etc. So what I actually find interesting here is he's actually put emotion into, into SI. This is not just sensor because he's put pleasure in there and you've got these instinctive needs in there as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure why. I suppose he probably has a specific emotion attached to all of them. For some reason. No. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, it, there's not this clear um, separation between sensor and uh, emotion. Because you've got, uh, because you have a, an emotional reaction to the sensory input. Um, I, I don't think that's... I mean, you can obviously, but I don't. I think that's probably not the right way to put it. I mean, obviously, he puts uh, play. physical sensations are feelings, so that's true. But emotion is a different thing, and I'm not sure you can draw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying all of it is. No, no, far from it. What I'm saying is that, but it depends. There is. This is why uh, it distinguished between feelings and emotions. Right. And emo emotions are are bound up with sensations, especially touch. I don't think that's true. Why not? Emotion. Let's see how emotion is defined. Um, I have in the past uh, read psychological material on the difference between emotion and 
uh, feeling. Yep. And there is a difference, but I would need to look it up again. Um, like emotion is more eff effective. Affective. Yeah, I mean that's how Jung did it, where it's like yeah. it's it's like feeling reaches a certain threshold and then it becomes uh, effective. But somebody can 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 have a really really strong feeling, but not show it. Well, here's the here is one difference a fundamental difference between feelings and emotions is that feelings are experienced consciously while emotions manifest either consciously or subconsciously but i don't think that really gets to the like the core difference either what, what about if you if you put your hand on the radiator that's a feeling you, that's, you not emotion. Your... that's a feeling that's not emotion but you feel the emotion you, you may feel, or you may not feel an emotion in connection or as a result of that. But the, the feeling when you get burned, that's a feeling. That's not emotion. Wait, uh, do you equate feeling with sensation? Feeling can be a sensation. sensation. It's... Um, all, like, physical sensations are, I believe, feelings. Wait a minute, like, wait a minute. I, I, I'm no. thinking of feelings in the Jungian sense, and then yeah, there is, yeah, and uh, th then there's it's rather the opposite. Feeling is like uh, the the feeling functions are rational function. It's it's rather cognitive. Like well, I, I'm talking about the difference of feeling and emotion in the current psychological definition. Mm. Oh, can can you read us a um, definition of feeling? Uh, let's see. You have it on the screen. No, but I'll look it up. Well, there are several. One of them is an emotional state or reaction, which is true because all emotions are also feelings. Well, that's the thing. All emotions are feelings, but not all feelings are emotions. Oh, I got it the other way around. No. At least if we're talking about the current definition oh no no i'm going off uh, say so for example anger would be uh an emotion but indignate but indignation but indignation would be a feeling because it's more involved than just the emotion with indignation yeah. well they would both be feelings well i can give a further example if somebody is walking along and they get knocked by somebody they get an instant uh, emotion they of, may uh, or anger. they may not but, but, the, but the actual really? feeling of being knocked is a feeling yeah but uh, but we have different understandings of it yeah my, clearly my, my, i my, am not familiar with this uh, i think it's very confusing if we're actually not using the psychological uh, the, the the definitions used in psychology yeah yeah i'm using the one that's in um more than 1920s 1930s definition of so somebody gets knocked by somebody they have it, then an instant emotion and definitions of it um i'm looking it up i mean in the cbt literature they use it interchangeably emotion and feelings that's even worse <laughs> I think in, in daily life, a lot of the time we use them interchangeably as well. Right then, let's... Okay, here, here's one. Feelings. Okay. okay, do you want me to read this? It's yep. not very long. Yeah, yeah. Feelings, both emotional experiences and as physical sensations, such as hunger or pain, bring about feelings according to, well, whatever source. Feelings are a conscious experience, although not very, not every conscious experience, such as seeing or believing, is a feeling. So it's basically physiological or emotional feeling, both fall under that definition. And emotion. 
emotion can uh, an emotion can only ever be felt so it's not a physical sensation though the emotional experiences it gives rise to uh, even though through the emotional experiences it gives rise to even though it might be discovered through its associated thoughts beliefs desires and actions ah, okay. emotions are not conscious but instead manifest in the unconscious mind these emotions can be brought to the surface of the conscious state through extended psychotherapy. A um, fundamental difference they... between feelings and emotions is that feelings are experienced consciously while emotions manifest either consciously or subconsciously. Okay. I think I have a good one. Uh, emotion, a complex experience of consciousness, bodily sensation and behavior that reflects a personal significance of a thing, an event or a state of affairs. So this this is really like um, cognitive. Mm. So, so we'll, this is we'll, why it's weird to me that he puts an emotion association. But I suppose if he associates emotions with every IME, then I can see why he might want to do that. Although I would probably choose not to. Like I don't think disgusted or fun is SI related regardless of what system you're using. Unless you're talking about, you know, the actual feeling of nausea, like physical, you know, avoid something because you might get food poisoning type of sensation. Um, do you have uh, the other panels for the other functions? Like in this uh, tables like this? What other emotions does he associate with um, the other functions? Well, not not many of them. I mean, we only really covered NI and NE with the other functions that we covered. Uh, and I don't really know where those tables are. People would have to see the events uh, for them. Okay, well, maybe it's not important. But okay, so you're given the current definition of the way they use the way they um, differentiate between emotion and feeling. I wasn't aware there was any other. That's why I'm so confused. Oh right, because it used to be something like um, sensations are, are coupled with their emotional reactions there too. I think part of it is that. Um, And Jung wrote about this thing called feeling sensation. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he meant emotion in a, in a very particular way. As, as Voice said, he related it to affect. But this depends on the... Uh, what have we got here? Right. Anyway, I think we're going to probably move on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because... Right then. Um, so we did always flop about SI. Right. Uh, right. I looked at that. Right. Now I can mention the bit about from the Kersey point of view about the way I experience going between two different roles. So um, in, in adapter, when I shift to FI and SI. And again, this requires different definitions. So we've got here. Let's see if this sounds like LII. I think it does, but we shall see. We'll get Santa's verdict. Architectonics is the science of spatial relationships, organization, structure, build, configuration. And architects from a very early age are preoccupied with the spatial relativity and systems design. But INTPs must not be thought of as only interested in configuring three-dimensional spaces such as buildings, bridges, and machines. They are also the architects of curricula, of corporation, of all kinds of theoretical systems. In other words, INTPs are men and women whose aim is to design systemic structures and to engineer structural models. And it gets a bit more on this one. Architects make structural plans, models, blueprints. To these reserved engineers often working alone at their desks, Drafting terms of computers, the coherence of their systems in what counts and the elegance of their configurations. Do you agree, Wojtek, that 
INTP is a good at that. I don't know if they are good at that, but they want to be. Yes, okay, very good point. <laughs> and the thing is, now composing, which is the predisposed role of uh, of, F of FISX, of ISFP, in Kersey, Barons, and Nardi. They even use the same name in, in uh, Barons and Nardi uh, with the composer. Is... So like I said, when I'm when I when I write, I have to switch to this role. And these roles are very complementary because you're going from design to composer. So we've got mm. here um composers use their talents to fashion pleasurable works rather than to stage shows for others. Often working alone, the reserved entertainers make arrangements, combinations, groupings, mixtures, and the like, exercising their improvisational skills by spotting parts. Or ingredients and then fixing them together into pleasing forms so you've got to get the configuration uh, correct the most obvious examples of virtuosity is the synthesizing process are some of the great musical composers but skilled composers excel in all aesthetic endeavors yeah I found that a funny perfumery uh, painting choreography directing films writing songs poems novels cooking fashion designing interior decorating landscaping perfumery uh, any occupation for the attentive blending of sights, colors, sounds, such as... Now, the thing is, though, I would argue here that a novel requires a hell of a lot of design. Imagine if you're writing a hard science fiction novel or you're writing a detective novel where you've got to get all the TI worked out, all the, all the, all the, all the uh, plot mechanics. That so is a lot... So this is about um, the way I uh, experienced this in sort of switching between these two roles. Uh, and, uh, Anna, do you have do you have a comment on that? Yep. Anna, hmm? do you have did you have a comment on that? Yes. I don't doubt that you do this. I don't doubt that you're good at this. Uh, when you write, I don't think this is a description of an ESI. No, it's not. This is something that I would uh, associate maybe SEI more than... Because it is clearly SI related. It's very aesthetics related in, a, in some of that stuff. Uh, but I think it might be just your quadra um, values rather than right. uh, a shift. Yeah, um, the thing is, is that, and again, it depends on which school of socionics you use. If you use humanitarian socionics and you look at the harmonizing subtype of ESI, it reads like a Kersey Baron's Nardi but if ISFP. You have to use a subtype to justify an inter system correlation. I think we're stretching it. I think it's. Well, yeah, uh, as... I think we. I think it's more reasonable to just say this. This is the. Um, this is a, a quadra thing. Right. This is very yeah. alpha right. SF thing to do. Yeah, this is why I've. Um, like I said, I've got it there in red, and like, and the, and the earlier part of the video was talking about when I'm in ESI mode, and this is a different mode. That, okay, that I can accept because this one I think is uh, Alpha SF and the uh, FI stuff that you do, which I've seen. Uh, I, I would say that is more like an ESI kind of shift. Yeah, right. So this is. A, I don't um, think yeah. I don't think you do it with FI plus SI. I think it's just FI. Right. Yeah, I don't go with the charges in that. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say that again about the about when I do what with FI. Uh, I think when you go into the FI mode, and I do think you do, um, I think it's just FI. I don't think it's combined with SI in any way. Right, okay. Otherwise, yeah, you're probably nicer about it, to be honest. Like, you're <laughs> right, not okay. nice about it. <laughs> right, okay. So what, it would, what, I, what I, I do think that in this particular example, though, if you are putting yourself in the center of a character and you're doing a lot of imagination things and sort of like putting yourself in a sensory world, 
then you are you then I'm using the imaginative aspect of SI at the same mm -hmm. time as the imaginative aspect of FI. Yeah, I, uh, uh, wait, are you talking about when you write now? Yeah, if, uh, if I'm, the if I'm but, but it's, but you see, the thing is though, when you write, when I write is, again, I was very much influenced by Robert McKee, is that you've got all of the thinking stuff in terms of getting all of the structure correct in terms of, and then you say you're writing a, a it's a case of, this is the scene, these are the scene objectives, this is what the character wants. So all of that, like looking at it from the outside, you know what all the objectives are, and you might even have a case where you've got like particular action, reaction beats and things. But a certain, so you've done, that's all like the design part, all the thinky parts. Yeah, you're talking but, about uh, yeah, but, but infusing it, it with feeling, like yeah, you have yeah, to make well, the characters yeah. alive. Yeah, and yeah, that's something else as well. So it's all part of going between these two and and I'm glad you mentioned that because and even before you get to this point, you've got to design your character, know what your character wants, and all of that, and have a real feeling of an and an in a feeling and a thought as what is this this character's point of view? How do they look at the world? And all of those things, and really thought about that, really sort of know this character, and then when you've got all that detail about a character and you know the situation then you put yourself in the center of that character and then you can feel as that character feels yeah in that I, situation I, but it only works if you've got the character properly worked out yeah i think you're describing ti any -E, fi fi and si at least yeah possibly all of them yeah but at it's least all, in, in that in that description you just gave us i think all those five were at least present yeah because it, it, it's all of these things working working together yes. and uh, but where, where where does si come uh, in the creative process of writing for you like i said i think it was with uh i mean i have got um some pictures going on in my mind now interestingly i can imagine camera moves quite well i think um more se like as i would be really fee uh if you would combine any feeding function with si it would be um uh, let's say you can feel how these people feel Sense, sense centrally in a yeah. way their their actual physical states at this moment that you can emphasize or describe it well and imagine it well that would be like si usage probably yeah it's, if someone's upset but again you've got that bleed over between fi and si in terms of sense it's like comfort well, somebody's and discomfort. upset there's a lot of fe in it like i, I think you're done playing fe which is weird you don't normally do that because if he well, I mean, that, when it's expressed. It has a lot to do with what I called infusing uh, the the writing, the characters with with feelings, all kinds of feelings. Like that's the you get like the, the passion into your play with Fe. Yeah, that's part if of I, it. If I if I helps weird. you to understand where where people come from to in a specific uh, context. But again, we're not really talking about any shift. We're just talking about your personal skills and you're going to utilize all of your IMEs to achieve it, right? Actually, I think, I think you're right about this. I, th I think it's, it starts with FI and then it sort of bleeds over into FE when, it, when, it's like when, you, when you get into it and then feel the emotion of the character in that situation. And then when you feel the emotions, but like you don't just get that, like you have to go through the process of being this character in this situation with their point of view, that might start with the FI. And then, and then as the emotion comes through, that might be, it's like Santa comes in with a tag and go, now you're in FE then. <laughs> I was just, right. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of my native language. I don't right. normally differentiate yeah. between them, but. Right. <laughs> If you want to do that, yeah. I can nitpick. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, because you get this bleed over. Yeah, there is, um, it has to be a bleed over. Otherwise, you would never finish a complete play because you need to be able to switch from one to another seamlessly in order to get all the angles of the character and the the all the aspects of, of what you're writing about. Yeah. And, and another aspect of then going on the outside. So you say you've written the character, but then certain things are going to crop up like certain speech pattern things and it's like and then then you would you, then you would rewrite it because like to make sure that certain speech pattern things are not repeated but the more you know a character the less that that uh should happen uh right then um Yeah, so like I said, it's so I see complementarity between these two roles, but I don't know if it's specific to me. So, Wojtek, do you think you've ever gone into a, a, a mode that's like this composer mode? Not really. I, I think I'm still very when uh, I, I'm not very artsy. When I try to do arts, I'm more of an architect. I try yeah. to construct it. Yep. All the world building, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I, I think you need to in, in model A terms, you need to be uh, uh, kind of focused on uh, and developing your uh, is it super id block uh, mobilizing and suggestive to be able yeah. to for you for an lii to switch into this particular mode because this is as i said alpha sf stuff um you would probably enjoy it if you can do it i, I imagine you would enjoy it mm. i enjoy my inner lsi <laughs> the thing is though voitech can have very strong fe at times but uh it yeah. probably doesn't yeah. Right. but yeah but but for you i think for you ben when you write uh this is what it kind of um is it does it feel like a challenge for you when you write or is it like an natural yeah it does it, 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 it it's difficult to get into that space because like i said it's like this is like um it's like i said with the way i felt with the esi it, it it depends yeah, that, on what on the situation if you're going towards an upset scene like like in the play Wilma and Reno, i wrote a character who's like praying and like and you've got a soliloquy there and she thinks she's being taken over by the devil and it's like she's like really upset and it's like i had to write that on a sunny day when it was like it was like really dark so it's a challenge uh, but you enjoy it yeah it's yeah like, uh is it draining for you? Is it? Uh, it can be. It can be. It can be because, like, with that particular section in the play, it's like because you're feeling what the character feels. So you got to go. This is like my, my natural tendency not to go into a place that's dark. And but there's a certain kind of. But it's like it's it's. I don't. I'm not like a four. Like a four would like to live in that area and living within those dark emotions, like the stereotypical uh, four. But yeah, it depends on the mood. Yeah, it can be enjoyed. It, it's my more... point. My point is that you enjoy it, and and but it's a challenge because you are enhancing oh. the IMEs, the elements in your psyche that you value. But you're not as strong at. That is a little bit different, though. When it's humor and it's putting yourself in a character, and the characters, when it's, that is I'm far not, more enjoyable. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying that it's always, you know, just those two. Obviously, yeah. as I said oh, earlier, yeah. it's going to involve all the elements. But yeah. that is what I get from your description. Like you yeah. want to be challenged in this particular area, and that if that is in, indeed the composer type of. Um, action then i alpha sf i'm telling you yeah but i usually enjoy uh 
when it when it's in in a cat and it's right in a humorous moment well humorous to me don't know if that's what others ben, then it's that the wing from an enneagram perspective maybe and it's also maybe the ne it's like it's much more enjoyable to write a a, a scene where which is a a humorous scene rather than a dark scene because as I'm imagining it, the, the, the funny thing, the funny lines are coming up in my mind as it happens. It's like, well, it's like the lines sort of pop into my mind fully formed because it's from the point of view of the character. And that's more enjoyable with the sort of the comedic. That might be because there's more any involved in there's more the humor part. When it's, when it's doing something that's darker and you're actually feeling the, and again, it's like, Laughter and humor, that's like a positive, more enjoyable emotion than than someone who's really upset. Yeah, I mean, this is very seven-ish. It's um, yeah. avoiding uh, negative feelings and going with positive ones. It's, so, it's, okay. also, it's also like, say, someone can do emotion memory. right? I mean, what I'm doing is not emotion memory, but if you would ask somebody to, to say, uh, an actor or actress to do emotion memory, they have to take a very strong negative personal memory of their own concentrate on it in order to produce the emotion and if you were to ask them do you enjoy doing that no <laughs> a lot of them might say um but part of them might enjoy it but it's still going to be a challenge for them to go over that old material now when i'm doing it like if you're putting someone in again it it depends on is it enjoyable it's just like so that's this is one of the reasons why I thought it was a seven. It's like going towards the enjoyment factor, and I think with the humor, especially with my kind of humor, there's more NE involved, and it's more and it feels more ENFP ish mode when it maybe more INFP ish mode when it's that, but light hearted. You prefer the light hearted, uh... yes, that's the thing. It's about that's why I send with these states, like when I'm in an FI state. Like especially when it's like ESI kind of FI, I don't enjoy it when I'm in it because I'm usually the experience of it is when I'm annoyed or when I'm feeling uh, fatalistic. And I mean, w w you saw the lines, it it's not an enjoyable state to be in. Uh, but again, that lines up with um, the way the role function. I think that is lines up with the uh, alpha quadra values. Yeah. I yeah. don't think you need FI or whatever in, to to throw into that. It's just the alpha preference for uh, positive, uplifting stuff. Yep. That's why the humorous stuff is more. Uh... But yeah, it's weird. But also, you got when you got the six in there, the six, the four, and the one. There's a chai type, and then all the particular things. Anyway, so maybe I should go over uh, how uh, I'll just put, I'll, I'm not going to go over these, but these are how I filled in Dario's questionnaire for FI. Uh, and then here is how, that's how I relate to this. I think this is definitely a part of SI. This about this, this, this imaginative part of SI about the, uh, the subjective reaction to the stimulus. And then I'll put that on the screen in a moment. And then this is how I scored to Dario Nardi's definition of SI, which basically he's defining this as essence of guardian, comfortable pace. Anyway, but we're not going to get into that. I want to put this on screen because I want to get into the bits of the Enneagram 6 definition that I relate to. And I think this is a factor because this, is, this, this crosses over with how I experience SI. Now, when you're a six, right, usually an FI state for me overlaps with an Enneagram six state. Uh, so I'm just going to go through these features. Uh, right. So hypervigilance. Hypervigilance is one of the traits. Um, so you've got a lot of worrying going on in the six. Again, not a pleasurable state. Uh, everyone knows what hypervigilance is, worrying, all this, alert for things going wrong. The, the key bits, here's an interesting bit, the orientation through authority. 
And I relate to this section here where the six wants an authority, but they always doubt the authority. It's like they want there to be out there a perfect authority, say an authority on a particular source where this person really knows their stuff, but they can't actually find uh, that authority because they're, they're flawed. They have a flawed uh, point of view. So um, what have we got here? There's always a, a tendency to question uh, the authority. Uh, usually sixes describe experience some sort of suspicion, questioning and mistrust in relation to authority figures. And some may also uh, frequently rebel and work against authority. So distrust in the authorities. But that is going to, that, is going to be expressed very differently in say an sj6 and the guardian six and then here's one doubt and ambivalence when you've got the ambivalent feelings and when that's involved with fi as well that makes things more complicated uh so you can see why i'd rather be in a happy state than a six state then you've got the contrarian thinking you're good at that sonna <laughs> Contrarian thinking. Uh, uh, what have I got here? That's interesting. I've written down that this bit's gold. I'll write this bit out. It can feel dangerous to sixes to immediately buy into someone else's point of view. So their habit of contrarian thinking constitutes a defensive strategy, a way to prevent being quickly taken over by somebody else's wrong idea. And Santa does have a six and a try type. Uh, all right. By instantaneously being able to argue the other side of any argument, the sixth tendency to engage in contrarian thinking allows them to go up against others who would try to persuade them as a way of attempting to dominate them. Uh, oh, interesting. Both as a way to avoid domination, as a way to search for the right answer, contrarian thinking allows sixes to feel that they will not be easily taken over or influenced in a way that might be dangerous uh so like i said you've got a lot of negative emotions and feelings involved with the six viewpoint and that tends to get bound up with fi uh with me i don't know about that like i just uh just today on my way home from work i read the sixth uh, chapter from uh richard's resource personality types um I mean, it's, it's, it's very confusing, like um, there, there, <laughs> there is no equivalent of the six in MBTI or Socionics. It could be basically like, yeah, it's, it's an SJ if you focus on the security, on the security is seeking. But all the other stuff sounds like um, on the other side, uh, side there's an, this authoritarian um, uh, straight in there and um, a lot of other weird like all the intellectual stuff like problem solver and um, interest in the abstract basically which sounds more intuitive yeah yeah um, that's be that's because so many types so many so many people who resemble a Jungian type it's like it's not it's Jonathan says any type any Jungian type can be a six it's just no. that some are more likely than others so that's why we did that whole series last year we did three videos it was Janae's idea Whereas it's like how the six varies by Jungian type. No, it's like so, 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 but I can't, uh, I can't see the clear connection to FI as you do between between six emotional states. But it's uh, because it's rather anxious. I, I mean, if, if yeah, it's the if ambivalence. By anything, it's an uh, anxiety. Yeah, it's the ambivalence where you got, where you got all of these mixed feelings. That's not things. ambivalence. That's just. Uh not being able to um settle <laughs> well yeah find, I mean, find the find the truth well yeah that's part of the ambivalence it's like the mixed feelings about things and then and, and then out of that getting this ambivalent state but it's you're then going over these ambivalent feelings and the doubts and the thoughts and the and the thinking and the feeling all mix, mixes with each other. And so the reason I associate that with FI, 
Well, what I'm doing is it's out of the head types. I say that's closest to FI because the seven tends to reframe away from that and the five tries to separate themselves off from feelings and emotions. I'm just saying it's the ambivalence part. I don't think it's anyone uh, IME. Honestly, well, no. I think I, I no, think no, 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 no. Yeah, you're right. It's not it's one six, IME. It's such a complex type. Like it's just even trying to narrow it down like that it just seem, it seems wrong because no, no. Yeah, if no. it feels like we're doing a disservice to the type. Yeah, yeah. I um, I oh. should have framed it a little differently. I forgot oh. I have a six four tri type duo here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not a fan what, what, of my what, six. What I'm telling you, I don't like it. Four. How do you think um, the six gets modulated with a four in the in the tri type? I think my six is very on off. It's uh, I don't relate to a lot of six descriptions, but the ones that I do are very like they nail it. Like I mm. feel like my six is narrow but strong. Mm. Like the aspects that I relate to, I relate to hardcore. The 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 the, the issue. The um, reward scenarios that trigger your six issues are very narrow, but then uh, very intense. Like, yeah, like there aren't that many six issues that I have, but the ones that I do are extremely prominent. Right. And how does get uh, how it is modulated by you for? Because, like, uh, I, I suspect, like, um, Ben is. Um, seeing his six issues through his four lens who is th through his uh, three type four lens because if any if i would uh, associate any uh, enneagram type with fi it would be four yeah well that's a good point like well right. not in not in socionics in uh, yeah, 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 it tends to be but yeah, uh, yeah. right um well i'm core four so that's i suppose that's a difference my mm. my six is a fix, which is probably why it's not as prominent, like a, like a width, um, in a width sense. Mm. So I I think it's more like my four is modulated by my six rather than my six being modulated by my four. Yeah, yeah sure. It's just not as 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 much of a core um, identity, I I would say for me. Mm. Yeah, that's that's what uh, tribe type is supposed to be like. Like I'm a core five, but I definitely see my two uh, traits, yeah. and issues that come out in certain uh, scenarios, certain yeah. situations. I mean, for a couple of years on this channel, I was absolutely adamant I was a four. You were? Yeah. Okay, I must it must have been before my time. Yeah, yeah, before your time, yeah. But that's what can happen. That's one of the, uh, I agree with Catherine Farber on that, that if you're a core six with a four fix, you can think you're a four. And it's because of the ambivalence of the six. I, I think it's more than that. I think it's if you're a core, four, uh, core six, it's not just a four that you can mix yourself with. Yes. You, can, you can see yourself in a lot of different types. Yeah, like, like have trouble. seven. Like, yeah, I did it with like... Which is which is actually a good example because that's not something I've ever done. I've never had that problem. I settle on my type once I understand the system sufficiently well, and then I stick to the type because I kind of did my homework and I analyzed it through well enough to be comfortable with my typing. And as a core so, four, you would be also very sure about your introspection. I'm very confident about my introspection. If you try to convince me that I'm something I'm not, you're you're gonna fail. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I believe that. Like I, I will just lose respect because I I think that you're not very you would, good at what you do. <laughs> you, you, would, you would react very very allergic to 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 this because this would be like an affront to your true self, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and and it makes me feel unseen. It's like you're not seeing who I am. You're not seeing yes. my core, and this is unacceptable. 
Yeah. Like for for me as a core five, I can uh, entertain the thought. Like uh, even if someone like is typing me differently, I can entertain the thought because I can uh, disassociate from it. But I, right. I, I I can imagine like you 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 would take it personally. I, I do take it personally, very yeah. much. And not in a system that I don't know well enough yet. For example, in OP, mm. I don't know objective personality well enough to type myself yet. So mm. it doesn't apply there, but Socionics, MBTI, any system, any system that I do actually know reasonably well, this mm. will, I take it very personally if you start arguing my type. I cannot mm. just... Uh, dissociate from it anymore which is mm. kind of annoying because it can really ruin my day yeah i mean uh, especially in um in circles that discuss uh, types all the time and especially if someone likes to challenge other people's types do you uh, uh do you experience uh okay you, you are a feeling type if you would be like a, a thinking type uh woman you would be probably challenged on that online all the time like this is something that that a lot of uh, T and T uh, women told me. Like everyone starts out with um, challenging their tiness. <laughs> right. I, I do. I do. Very rarely do people suggest uh, any kind of logical or thinking type to me. It's very rare. I mm. think uh, it's probably ILI is probably the only one ever anyone's ever suge suggested to me, and that's because I get go into a very TI mode when it comes to typology. I get very mm. analytical, but yeah, usually they suggest other um, ethical or um, feeling types. Yeah, such so as ESI, ESI or EII. You or think... in MBTI, ISFP, usually because they were like, well, you're not very NE, are you? And I'm like, no, but I'm a bit less SE. So, <laughs> mm. but yeah, that's uh, usually feeling types or ethical types, depending on the system, which is fine because that's accurate. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's uh, um, it's midnight here in Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going <laughs> to, I'll wind up in a moment. So, that, so for instance, Sana there, recognition. Wanting to be seen, one mm -hmm. of the big traits of the uh, of the like, uh, uh, the curse of being a four. Yeah, and uh, that's amped up in the NFs in the idealists. Yeah, that too. Uh, yeah. Right then, I want to stop the recording now. Mm -hmm. uh, there, Santa, keeping me honest, challenging me. There we well, go. <laughs> Well, I, I asked you where you want me to come, and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You Keep argue. You honest. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I can do that. Yeah, but like, like I said, that graphic was an old graph. That's 2014. Uh, I would, I would try and nuance it a bit more with the uh, the conscience thing. Anyhow, so I'm going to stop the recording.